How much more are you going to pay for your condo in 2020? How much more these Toronto condos are going to cost in 2020 per year, per day, per month? Let's look at it. Hello, everyone. Yossi Kaplan here, Toronto real estate agent and mortgage broker with Search Realty and Search Mortgage. Fantastic company. I really love it. And if you want to know about investing, sign up to my Investor Insider uh, newsletter. You can find it going to Yorkville Luxury Real Estate or any of my other sites. And there'll be a pop-up. I'll go to the newsletter and sign there. So how much are you going to pay for these condos? The first thing I want to show you is uh, some stats. And look at these stats. So this is condos.ca, the main page. Okay, when you go here, you got to be logged in. And it'll show you. They had, a, they had a glitch in the system, but it looks okay now. And they're reporting $766 per square foot average for all types of uh, for all types of condos, 416, 905, wherever they, they, they do this. In the past 14 days. In the past 14 days, they're looking at 406 units sold, and look at this. The price in the last 14, um, last four, 14 days, it's showing uh, uh, 766, and the December average showing 770 with 388 sales. So you can see there's a bit of discrepancy here, but that's because these two are probably measured differently. So I mean, they should maybe fix, nonetheless, very similar. So 770, and you can see from condos.ca that actually this is the highest uh, number we've ever reached. Um, so 770 was also true for June of 2019. Even 2018, the max was 740. And the crazy years was 26, 15, 16, 17, which we had the most amount of run up in price. I mean, we were at 458 here, December 2015, four years ago, we we're at 458. And we had a crazy, crazy run 15, 16, 17, you know. Average of about 20, 25% every year, which is insane, but is it? Everything goes about supply and demand, and the supply, of course, is concrete. It's concrete trucks, it's permits, it's red tape. It takes forever. I look at my developer friends. It's not fun to be a developer. They do a building, the city cancel it on them, they got to redo it again. It's, it's, a lot, it's not easy, you know. They're making crazy money, but it takes many, many years of losing money, of putting money in until they make it. So they better be, get paid for it. They don't do it for free. And the investors that are buying all and standing in line to buy these condos, they actually they want to ride this thing because where else can you get this return? Nowhere, okay? And this economy, this society does not let you make any money. I mean, if you go and you have a salary and you're stuck at $20, 30 40 $50 an hour, most, most jobs are anywhere from 20 to $50 an hour these days. That's not enough. So you need to have other sources of income. You have to supplement your uh, income. And what you do is you can supplement it by two ways. By uh, cash flow from your properties, or if you have another business, give you cash flow. And, of course, by appreciation, which you cannot bank in your pocket. But in the future, you can either borrow against it, or you can you, borrow against it means, you know, like... Um, get a HELOC, get a second mortgage, increase your mortgage, refinance, there's many tools, ways to do it. My mortgage broker can help you with that. Or what you can do, you can sell it and then take the profits. Oh, you'll see, but I sell it, I need to pay a couple of gains tax. Yes, of course you do. That's part of doing business. In Smart investors look at how much money is left over and they look at their ROI. I don't care how much it costs me to sell this unit. If it no longer serves me or it's appreciating too low because it's an older building or it doesn't fit my mindset I just get rid of it I don't think about it twice I don't get too emotional about it that I learned from one of the best brokers in the city he goes keep your eyes on the prize keep your eyes on the prize do what you do um, my banking friends that's a real estate broker and my banking friends at Ivy uh, used to tell me take some profit but if I take profit you know what about tomorrow's profit says, just take the profit put in your pocket but it cost me so much money to sell it so just do it put the money in your pocket now you close, now you can reinvest. It's something that appreciate just as high because everyone knows that most condos appreciate really quickly the first couple of years and then they go with the market because they become resale. Now, when you buy a condo at uh, insane price at, uh, you know, this is 766 a foot, okay? But the new condos are 1300 a foot or 1500 a foot, but double that. So would those appreciate as fast? <coughs> time, time will tell. Uh, but you can see there's a huge discrepancy. There's a gap between the new condos on the market and between what's available. So should you should you stop investing in new condos and start investing in resale? Well, that's an option too, which you've got to quantify. Um, I was watching some Tesla videos, and I'm putting that Tesla uh, Cybertruck uh, down there 
I'm going to put the bubble here. So here's a video of, uh, this is really good, solving the money problem. Really, really good channel. Really enjoyed it. And basically they tell you that Tesla is moving so fast and they actually published the plan twice. There's a letter by Elon Musk. One is from 2006 and the other from 2018. And they actually went through the plan. Now I have a friend in San Francisco, California, who actually owns one of the original roadsters. <laughs> and I remember he's driving away. It was so fast. I've never seen an e-car before. Uh, that goes back to 2012, 13, whenever um, zzz, that thing just went off. And they're just getting better and better and better. You know, they got a million mile battery. It's of course not that you don't have to charge it for a million miles, but I mean, it's good for a million miles. You know how the phone battery just degrades all the time? Well, those don't. So what happens here is for Elon to make his, uh, to make his uh, salary. He doesn't get any salary, zero dollars. All it is, he owns Tesla stock. And the higher the Tesla stock goes, the more he is worth. And once Tesla is done their plan, which is a crazy plan to connect everyone um, in the automotive, self-driving, and the power supply, which comes from the solar into the battery, uh, wall pack, battery pack. Um, and then, of course, you can sell it back to the utility company. And then your Tesla, once, uh, once the, and that was an amazing thing. Uh, so once all those Tesla can drive themselves, you can actually rent it back to Tesla and the car will drive itself out of your garage and go pick up people and basically be like a Uber competition. But now your car, you buy, you buy, you lease the car from Tesla and then when you don't use the car, it sends the money back to Tesla. That is genius. Should you buy Tesla stock instead of condos? Well, they're both at all time high. They're both at all time high. So which one you should buy? Uh, maybe a little bit of everything. So this is really nice and sexy, but you know, cars are cars. The actual car depreciates in value. The actual car needs uh, fixing and stuff, and the more it's on the road, especially Canadian roads with the salt and everything, that's harsh. Um, the condor is a, is a different animal, you know. The condor is a different animal because and there's an investor insider on the Urban Realty 2, a pop-up, so use it. Um, or you can just go to the newsletter link. It's, it's the same. Uh, newsletter on the contact and then invest a newsletter. I moved it to links. There it is. Okay. So if you look at unit like the Keeley, for example, you can still get some units here. They're selling. They're selling quick. They're selling every day. Uh, but they had about 20 units available when I posted this. And, you know, all these units are really good. Now, I have people that are, keep finding faults. This is not good. This is too low. This is too high. I thought it was east, but it's west. Somebody sent in the wrong information. They get really hung up on this. And they just... They just can't go beyond that that's fine next year they're gonna buy the same condo whether it's the Keeley or somewhere else and they're just gonna pay more for it they're just gonna pay more for the same why is that is because it's emotional they just can't fathom uh, doing this deal maybe they haven't done it before or because you know when when the, the VIP goes up I hope it's not too loud it's people speaking really loudly but that's the way of the world um, but what happens is when everyone's standing in line and going to buy, buy the condo, you know, you're going to do it too. Ta, ta, ta. But once you, you're a bit late to the game or you didn't get to the VIP, now you start to think about it. You start to analyze. You're doing too many worksheets. You stay too late at night. By the way, don't call me or email me after 7 p.m. I'm not going to respond. My brain doesn't work. I get up at 6 in the morning. What good? You know, you have a question. I got to text Yossi. Don't do it. Put it in an email and wait until tomorrow or call me the next day. Okay, number one master plan community that I chose, and it, it is the number one, and I did it before they even started, was the Well by Tridell. Down there, 1400 a foot, 1500 a foot. Is it a good investment? Yes, it is a viable investment. Absolutely. Why? Because in this one, I see very, very good value. You know, Shopify is getting a quarter million square feet there. There's thousands of employees, and there's a lot of, there's, there's a whole commercial section here. And all these engineers, and I showed you already on the glass door, uh, these engineers, there's a software engineer, 107, well, software engineer, 149. These are the salaries. Account exactly 141, software engineer, 40 bucks an hour, software developer, 112. You know, if you're a 25-year-old kid that did the 12-week course about programming, you're probably starting at seventy or $80,000 a month. That's enough for you to pay, say, 2000 a month, and then your buddy... I was also a software engineer from the same course. You're both 25 years old, and you, you, you can afford $4,000, so you can afford a nice townhouse, 
or a nice two-bedroom, and you can go right in one of these nice communities and buy right there or rent right there. Okay, so those those are the people you want to rent to. Um, if you look at 488 University, if you can grab a unit at 488 University today, uh, I have one assignment for one bedroom. I have some two bedrooms. Uh, no one plus den right now, but when those one plus den will come, they'll be about 750,000 and up. Okay. Um, if you can afford something like this and you can get in now, it'll be really good. Why? Because tomorrow it's going to be more. Okay, there's a few buildings going to appreciate, appreciate, appreciate. To me, that's one of them. When Shangri-La came up and it was at West Bank, okay, West Bank is the same as King West, sold out the highest dollar per foot in the downtown. Only Yorkville is higher. And Yorkville, I don't think, is sold that much that fast. West Bank beats everyone. Ian Gillespie beats everyone. So if you can get into one of these projects, you are doing really, really well. And if you have the money today to get in this project and you think about it for six months, you're just going to pay more. In my opinion, you're probably going to pay 5 to 8% more in six months. So that million-dollar unit, you're just going to pay another fifty, sixty, dollars $100,000 on the same unit. Same unit. Now, your rent is not going to go up by so much because rents are finite, okay? I saw, I think it was in the Toronto Star Summer yesterday, the rents are going to go up by 7% next year. That's great, but you know what? It's not going to be enough. It's just not going to be enough um, because the rise in the prices of the condos is faster than the rise in rent. It just has to be that way. That's the economy. So we move from economy of cash flow to economy of appreciation and economy of asset-based. So you need to start realizing assets. Now, I'm not talking about the shit that we work assets where they, they have all these crazy ideas of accounting and they show you assets which are debts. You know, bank considered all the loans and as assets because it's, it's ours, we own it. But if the people stop paying, the value of the assets drops to zero. It doesn't drop by one or two percent, just to zero. So is it a real asset? I don't know. But condo, brick and mortar, it's a real asset. You can walk in there, you can get a key, you can live in it and you can rent it and you know if your price is reasonable and your tenant is reasonable, chances are you're going to get paid fixed amount. Okay, so you download the condo calculator, uh, name, email, I'm not a robot, and then you're going to get a link to my Dropbox with the latest version of the calculator. Right now it's version 1.1. Uh, this is my version. You can download your own and then put it back on your, on your Google Docs. Okay, and then what you'll do, you'll put like how many square feet you've got here, 450. Okay, and how much you paid for it? Five, I don't know, five twenty-eight nine hundred. Uh, so that means you paid eleven seventy-five a foot. So a twenty percent deposit is one hundred five, and your carrying costs, assuming your maintenance fees are point seven. I two videos ago I reviewed condo fees, municipal tax about two twenty a month, and your mortgage. So now you're looking at twenty-five hundred for the one bedroom at a fancy twelve hundred dollar a foot building. More or less makes sense. Now you need to get twenty five hundred a month. This is the yellows where you put information. So if I if I get twenty five hundred a month, more or less I break even. Here I lose thirteen bucks a month. Let's say it's the same. Okay, that's my break even point. What can I do to increase my cash flow? Of course, um, I cannot change the condo fees. I cannot change the tax rate. Um, I can get a better mortgage, but I like to, I like to be reasonable. Two point eight, three percent. That's reasonable. What you can do is you can put more money down. So use that uh, occupancy here. Let's see what happens if I use so five five five. So that counted twenty percent so far for your deposit. Now I'm going to add ten percent more. So I put another fifty two, fifty three thousand dollars. Suddenly my cost dropped to two two six six, and now I'm making a bit of money every month. Now I'm making two hundred thirty four dollars a month. Now I'm cash flow. Okay, let's say I have more money available. Okay, and that, that gives me a 1.77% annual annual ROI. And if you double click here, you can see how I calculate the ROI. That, these are net, 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 cash, cash, cash over cash ROIs. Okay, so you want to make more money, you go the old school and you just like, what if I do? I have a hundred thousand dollar available, 105, 106. Uh, now my cost has dropped to two thousand dollars. Now, now I'm making four eighty-one, about five hundred dollars a month. So it's about six thousand dollars a year. And now I'm starting to make a bit of money. Okay. So one way to do it, to increase your cash flow, is to put more money down. The other is, of course, to pay less. But to pay less, you cannot do in downtown. Now you have to get out of downtown. So let's say if I paid four fifty, and I paid, uh, I went to the, I went to the, um, to the Keeley condos. And I found the unit, and 
this units there for eight something a foot, nine hundred a foot. Okay, so you still have a few units. If you want the the most recent, just email me. I'll send you the hot list. Uh, not a problem. I don't post hot list online, obviously. Uh, but now, if I did it this way, and of course it, I put one hundred eighty thousand down. Suddenly I'm making 736, I'm making almost 9,000 a month. So imagine you have, and, and, and the longer you own the condo, uh, the more you put into the capital and your expenses are less. So in this, this is cash, 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 but what I don't show you here is that the money you're adding into, into the condo itself, in the capital, because every month, about say about half of whatever you're paying to the mortgage, uh, in, case, in this case, it's... Uh, it's going to be here, mortgage, that 1262 or whatever it is you're paying here. Uh, let's say this is zero. So the 2100, about half of that goes back into your pocket against the value of the condo, against what you borrowed from the bank. So if I add another five, uh, even a thousand bucks here a month, suddenly, you know, uh, I'm at a, let's say I'm at more or less at a break even point here, just for sake of example. I see I broke something here. Cannot be zero. Okay, I'll, I'll fix it. Let's just go back. Here we go. Um, but uh, oh, cause I, cause I, I changed the wrong. Uh, I gotta change the yellow, not the white. So now it's gonna work. Okay, now we're good. So even in this case, at twenty one eighty five, and let's say I just break even here. So I'm just gonna put twenty one eighty five. Now I'm zero, <laughs> minus one dollar. So maybe twenty one eighty six, cause I'm not showing the decimals. Okay, so. I'm breaking even here, but what happens is this mortgage of 1683, about $800 of that, and more and more every time because the bank takes more interest and less less capital. And as times goes by, uh, it increases. You can see the payment. This is what I entered. You can actually try it yourself. That's what I. That's the formula I came up with. This is the algorithm I designed, in order to be as close as I can to what the bank uh, does. But do your own if you like. Um, but this is $800 a month in your pocket, you know, times 12, 800 times 12, 9,600, say 10,000 a year. So now the tenant is paying into the, my mortgage 10,000 a year in capital. Oh, thank you, tenant. After five years, 50,000, probably more, probably 60,000 because that capital grows and the interest reduces, okay? So suddenly, and then if I raise the rent on them, a little, even a little bit, and maybe I get uh, 2250 because I can raise about, about 2% or whatever every year. And if it's a new building, maybe I can do more. These rules keep changing. Uh, so now I made another, and I start to make a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Well, once I have one or two or three units, I'm starting to make some real money. Um, there's a really uh, good old time broker that I really appreciate. I've learned a lot from. I don't mention names because it's not the point here. Um, but I always talk very positive about people I've learned from and also really positive for people make mistakes because you learn from them just as much. Um, and he tells me, you know, you need 10 units, 10 units to, to have like complete income running. And the moment you have jingle bells, jingle bells, in 10 units, once you have 10 units, okay, you stop working because basically, <clears throat> you know, if you have a cash flow of say five or eight or ten thousand dollars a month, <clears throat> that's enough to sustain you. But the money coming into your pocket from all these tenants paying you back through the mortgage is much, much larger. Okay? And now you're looking at fifty thousand a year or a hundred thousand a year plus the cash flow. So that's in a and, and that's not including the appreciation. So ten condos, you know, if if your average condo appreciate by fifty thousand times 10, half a million. It is possible. It is absolutely possible. But most people don't do it because they're too scared and they just, they just, in their heads, they just get wrapped up and they can't get out. You know, they take bad advice. I'll show you something. Um, I, got a, I got a comment yesterday. I got a comment yesterday and I'll show you uh, from someone and I really appreciate all the comments. Thank you very much. Um, but you see what happens. This is uh, yesterday's video. Okay. Um, and the comment's really good, and I appreciate the comment, but there's one problem with the comment. And then the guy or girl uh, repeats the comment. Uh, so here, this comes from OACY16. Do you think a suburb proximity is not important? Okay, which, this is a very general question that shows me that this person 
has not done the research and has not actually quantified the information. I mean, all you got to do is condos.ca and start searching for buildings which are on the, sub the subway and look how much they cost and look how much rent they get and just divide one by the other and look at the ROI, okay? Run, take, them, take these numbers, put them in the condo calculator and calculate them and you'll see the truth. Uh, there's so much time in life, so I can't do everything for you, and it's very important you take it, take it for yourself. Uh, but this is a tool. It's free. I show you everything. Just go do it. Um, but if you start looking at these numbers, I bet you that you're not going to get these crazy returns on the subway, but you need to quantify. Uh, so I, I responded to this person, and I said, I said, uh, thanks for the question. I think you need to define what is important means to you and quantify it. If you were to pay 30% more to be on the subway line, would you get 30% more in rent? Will you sell it for more than you could have in another location? How long would it be on the market versus other locations? And the guy's like, oh, girls, thanks for the answer, Yossi. But this is really something that, it's a simple answer. The simple answer is, show me the money. Do the numbers. This is what my dad always said. I was like, Dad, da, 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 da. I said, Dad goes, can you prove it? <laughs> you know, Dad's an engineer, so like, show me empirical proof. Can you show me the proof? Okay. Uh, thanks for the answer, Yossi. I think you're right talking about a return on investment. The money will determine what is important. Is it possible to lose money on an overpriced downtown unit and make good return on investment in Hamilton? Right? So he's almost asking me to say yes, like begging me to say yes. The answer is one word. It's the same. It's quantify. Do the research, okay? Run some numbers. Take five buildings downtown that you like, which are on the subway. Then take five buildings in Hamilton. They're obviously not on the subway because they don't have one. And look at how much it costs you to buy. What will be your running costs? What will be your operational costs? The condo calculator does it for you. And how much you're going to get rent. Go to condos.ca or any website. And look how much they're asking for rent. And look what they got for it. Obviously, if they ask for too much, don't use these numbers. Use the real numbers and quantify. Okay? And if you can quantify, you'll see. Okay? Now, this may be another video. Not for this one. Okay, um, I showed you yesterday the housing charts and I do have them open here. And what you can see is we reached a really crazy peak and also the sales. This is the, the price went up real fast. And if you kind of smooth it out, the moving average, okay, you can see that we actually reached a new peak on the moving average. Okay, so if you are in an older building, you may not see the full appreciation, but you are in a good building that has good reputation and good value and the units are good and everything works and the amenities are real, okay? No uh, virtual golf. That's just stupid. It is so stupid to do these things. And you'd be amazed how many, I'm sorry for the word, but it is dumb. It is senseless, mindless. And what the most important amenities are communal amenities where people can come together so it'll be a party room that you can just walk in and use it as a lounge. You don't need to sign it and pay for the cleaning fee. Just forget this, developers, okay? We want community spaces. There's six months of winter now. There's nowhere in my building I can go hang out, okay? I want to go, instead of, say, the coffee shop, I want to go in my building, bring a little coffee from home, and maybe there's a coffee machine there, bring my little pod or whatever, and make my coffee and sip my coffee and have super fast hot Wi-Fi and do it there and meet some of my neighbors and have some friends because that's the most thing. The developer that will build social amenities will be the winner and that building will be the winner. If you see a building with like dog wash and virtual golf and a screening room which nobody ever uses, that's a waste of your condo fees, okay? So you can say, oh, there's not a lot of condo fees, but all these spaces and these amenities, I mean, they build this room. How much would it cost you to take this room out and make something new? And of course, you need the vote and the condo board and expenses. Nobody want to do it. That's ridiculous. Developers, if you're designing a building before you design it, before you stamp it in the city, call me and I'll, sh I'll, I'll take a look. I've, I do for a lot of developers now and just like show me your plans. You know, I grew up. I, I was reading floor plans and charts from dad's business before I knew how to read at four years old and it's not that difficult and you do it so many years over and over again and you see the plan and you literally see it rising in your mind's eye and you can see how it works okay but the prices are going up so how much would you pay more I mean isn't that what we started today with 
how much would you pay more? Uh, here's a really nice 989, a million bucks for this 90 Niagara. Right here, King West. Uh, really, really nice. Take a look. How much would this home would be? Now, this is a, a townhouse. I told you many, many times, townhouses are the fastest appreciating assets. Okay. Um, this is absolutely gorgeous. Would you pay 50000 more for this in 2020? Of course you would. Okay. Every single developer. That's a nice Rothko there, by the way. Mark Rothko. Look him up. Amazing a painter. Um, this is impeccable. So, so nice. Why not pay a million fifty for this or a million one where everything else that has been sold to you? And this is across from what's going to be West Condos, by the way. Okay? West Condos already... Oh, I hope I didn't stop that. Resume. Uh, West Condos... Can't do it. Uh, West Condos already uh, going to be asking probably for 12 to 13 a foot. Okay? This is a thousand a foot. This West Condo is going to come up, and I did a bunch of sales there, and it's a phenomenal building. Okay, so you get two stories here, and you got the foyer with the bath, and you come upstairs in a beautiful living space, and then um, a bedroom and a walk-in closet big enough to be a bedroom. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's kind of a weird, I would just close that and make a giant bedroom the whole master and second. Okay, I see what they're doing here. Okay, but it's really cool. Um, so you will be paying more for this, and you probably will be paying... Uh, now, this to me um, is a better deal um, because it's a useful living space. If you have a useful living space, uh, by the way, go to yossi.searchrealty.co. Uh, It'll go back to this, but it's the same one. So it goes like this. Um, you're probably paying about $200 more per condo in, uh, uh, per day. So, so every day is going to cost you 200 bucks more, okay? Every day is going to cost you 200 bucks more. This is C1. This is the downtown west, so west of Young, east of Dauphin, from the water to Bloor, okay? It, that's the default search, and then you can, of course, sort it uh, by price, which is always fun. So what's in the downtown? I got 21 million, 500, 13 million, 11 million, 10 million. Eight million. There's a whole building. I'm not sorting by anything. Eight million, seven million. That's everything. Everything, everything, everything. Okay. And of course, once you start to filter more, you're gonna get to start to see more. So, always turn the one bath here. Put the minimum price of three or four hundred, just to avoid stores and commercial spaces and so on. And maybe I'll put a uh, max of two million. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now you start to see uh, listings, and of course, um, con apartment, which is the main category for condos on this system, and you can see what's going on here, okay? And you can see how they're all along Young, and then kind of going towards the entertainment district, and then King West, and then spreading from there, okay? But that's only the C1. Um, you're going to pay for these units on average of $200 more every day you didn't buy today. Uh, the town's probably about 225. The semi's about 275. The home's about 300. So you know, um, but even 100 to 400 dollars a day, I think it's a safe range to say that you will pay more every single day for these type of units. Okay. Uh, the homes, of course, the most because if home went up by 10, 100 thousand dollars, divide by 365, it gives you 300 and something. Okay. So why are you not investing today if you can that is a hundred percent a psychological thing there's if you can if you cannot that's okay um, there's a lot of people call me and say I want to invest next year yes thank you very much for doing this because we have time to plan um, I have people I've been working with for two and three years haven't bought anything it doesn't matter I'm not gonna rush you but let's put a plan together okay there used to be financial planners but what they do they go and I went to a financial planner once he goes and computer says look I got eight thousand stocks and bonds and mutual stuff to buy and it's all from T D website. So this guy was going to the T D website and offering me stuff from the T D website and then charging me or the T D commission on selling me the exact same product. <laughs> There's nothing unique about it. Nothing. 
He didn't even know how to analyze. He just has his license for selling stuff and that's it. Okay. <laughs> but a lot of people did it because, you know, like the guy had a nice shiny suit and a fancy office. Me, I'm just a guy at the coffee shop talking about condos. <laughs> I don't want to like, I don't want to go to the office. But look at this, okay? If this is going to go to 800, 30 bucks a foot more, that's, that's going to go about 30, $30 a foot more, okay? 30 over 770. That's uh, only three, saying 4%. Only 4%. So that's 600,000. 660, that's the average of condo now. Times 1.04. 686 minus 660. So that's an average condo divided by 365. So 72 bucks. Okay, so I went a little overboard. So 72 bucks for that 60, 660 condo. So the one bedroom. One plus then seventy-two bucks every day, give or take. Obviously, your land transfer, uh, your land transfer is more. And uh, I don't think there's any other transactional cost because the lawyer is a fixed fee. Uh, you, you buy, you don't have to pay me. Only when you sell, you pay the real estate uh, times thirty. Uh, twenty-two hundred a month. So twenty-two hundred a month plus whatever. I'll round it to say twenty-three hundred a month because the land transfer is going to grow a little bit too. So. Now you're gonna pay uh, twenty two hundred a month, twenty three hundred a month more for every month that you could have invested in that condo but have not. Why do you do this? Because it's a psychological barrier. It's actually the psychological is in your heart, maybe not in your mind. They're fighting. You know, the mind says it's really good deal, and like I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So, you know. Uh, for 20 years that I've been, I've been hanging in real estate, I mean, all my life in construction and 20 years looking at transactional real estate, working for brokers, working at sales sites, doing resale, doing pre-construction, it's more or less people are people, you know, like, I don't want to do it now. I mean, wh why did Nordic sell so quickly? Because it was a good deal of a thousand bucks a foot and there's enough people, say they sold 500 units, 500 people realized that. Why did Galleria sold overnight? Because... Because Galleria had, uh, I don't know, 10 or 20 people. There's 2,000 real estate agents came to the opening. I was there on, on a skin, and it was already packed. They had like, they're like guards outside to manage the traffic. So the Galleria, you know, it's really good. Um, there's me at Galleria. Where is that picture? So, but there's, you know, there's more projects. And yes, the next building will be a little more, but you think about it this way. You didn't get into the one, that's fine. You didn't get into the two, that's fine. Now, if you're not going to buy the three, will you buy the four when it's more? Will you buy the five when it's more? Will you buy a six when it's more? Will you buy the last building where it's $1,500 a foot? Okay, you see what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> there's me and the guy from Elad. So, you know, they had, they had good prices. It's all here. You, you can look. Okay. So now, if you can invest in quality, I would definitely consider the well by Tridel. It is very expensive in today's dollar, but I still think that it's, it's very, very good. Um, and if you're not in that price, then you have options. You have Galleria. This is master plan community. This is more obviously, but uh, this is master plan community. Okay, there's the well. And there's Galleria, which I pinned at number two. And then, of course, there's the Crosstown, which is number three. And we are going to see, uh, that's Galleria still, and that's Crosstown. There's a whole video about it. We're going to see uh, more of these type communities coming up with, you know, 10,000 units. But they're designed, they're planned, they're way better than City Place. If you own a City Place, maybe it's time to dump those units. Let someone else buy them because, you know, they're not going to appreciate as fast as the other ones uh, because they were not designed as a community. If you want to design a community, you know, the, the, the ground floor needs to be communal. I mean, I have to have those stores, not just a freaking bank. I don't want to see bank branches. I want to see people serving other people in a communal way. Coffee shop, little restaurant. Yes, developer, you may not get the rents that the bank will give you. And it's okay to have a bank branch, but I don't want to see a bank and another big company and another big company. I want to see little things and really create a whole community. And that's what uh, King West by Ian Gillespie is doing. Okay, by the way, if you're still with me on this video, it's long, but I've got to give you this information. 
Okay, so here. So this is the GM Oshawa, and the GM Oshawa is closing. I did a, I did a video about GM, and I said it's going to close. What to do with it? And I said, let's build a huge cannabis plant in there, everything. But these people are a great example. You know, that, that uh, the guy for the union, he just resists, resists, resists. He couldn't fathom, just like the people that don't buy the condos, he couldn't fathom the people that have the ability to invest by don't. That's what I mean. Um, he couldn't fathom. He couldn't fathom this. But that's reality. It's going to close. So you, you, you got to change, okay? It's okay. It's no big deal. If tomorrow the AI takes over the real estate agent job, that's totally fine. I'm okay with it. There was another thing here. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, yeah, here. Watch this. This is really good. Okay, right here. Food prices are going up. What do I tell you? Follow the price of food because that's the best indicator to see. So, and I always say, look at the price of lemon. Okay, Loblaws is going to be over $1 for one lemon, but in Chinatown is 50 cents. So you go, oh, but it's Chinatown. No, it's all the same lemon. They all come from the Ontario Food Terminal, okay? <laughs> the condo. The real estate is different because it's got location, it's got amenities, you know, where is it going to be, all these things. Um, so here you go, it's not closed, go back to our friend here that is obsessed, obsessed with, uh, with, the, with the close to the subway, right? Obsessed with close to the subway. I need to be on a subway, I need to be on a subway. No, you don't need to be on a subway, you need to invest smartly. That's what you need to do, that's what you're missing. So you need to scour the internet, yossi.searchrealty.co. Okay, yossikaplan.com, they're all different, they're all blogs, and I put various information. And you can, this, this, like detailed, detailed investments, detailed ideas that I share with you. Go read these things. Now, I see the stats, people are going into this. You know, there's 100, 200 people every day reading what I do. There's 100, 200, and sometimes over 300 uh, people watching the videos every day. So, watch, watch these videos, you know. There's a lot of information I share with you, whatever I can, typical owner, high cap. There's so much information here. So much information. I'm really trying to, you know, these units here, that was an amazing uh, investment. And I brought some people and, like, they didn't want to buy them. These units, since um, six months ago when I was showing, I was in this unit, appreciated by $50,000 in six months. And the cost in these units was 5099 I think. I don't know how much they got it for. I said they got it for 510 but easily it's going to be in the 600 range a year later. That's 100,000 appreciation on your 20% investor on 100. You doubled your investment in 6 to 12 months. Okay, that was a resale. Resale has got a good opportunity if you know how to look for it. If you're looking for more fancy stuff, look here at yorkvilleluxuryrealestate.com. Uh, 488 University is a phenomenal investment and... You know, there's a rush of people buying, going to buy right now because they understand that the market's going up. This is another site I found on Google. I think these are a little low salary. Specialist Physician 180, way more. They build way more. Dentists, way more. Petroleum engineers, they don't make under 250. Engineering managers, <laughs> way, way more. Maybe university makes 120, but I think there's a lot of other perks and stuff. They make more, okay? Glass doors, too. So these are your tenants, and if you are one of these people, you need to invest, um, okay? Toronto Condos 2020, how much more are you going to pay? So you're going to pay 80 bucks more every day and more. CondoCalculator.ca, take the numbers from condos.ca, grab a, grab a bunch of condos, one, two, three, condo one on the subway, condo two on the subway, condo three on the subway, pick three different ones, put them in, try to find like your typical one plus dent, put the price, or you're going to be paying 600000 for this one plus then. See if it's worth it. Then look at another investment that I offered you. I'll go back to the Keeley just because it's, it's posted there. Uh, I lost my link now. UrbanRealtyToronto.com Okay, and here you can buy 900 bucks a foot. Some of these units even less. So you're saving $300 a foot or about 30% on the, on the unit. 
but the rents are very similar because people cannot pay 30% more rent. It's just not possible. You just you can't pay 30% more rent because the salaries are fixed. Okay? That's the equilibrium. So you need to play that game. You need to play it smart. You need to know what you're doing. Uh, go to Google Treb housing charts. Click on the link. It's going to give you the page and then it's going to open the PDF for you and do what I do. Do what I do. You know, spend your nights. I don't watch TV. I look at this stuff. <laughs> I don't want to watch TV. It's, it's all stuff. Who cares? It's, but look at look at the orange. Okay. So the thing is, this market is going to continue to blow. There's a lot of factors here. There's global factors. There's immigration, which is huge. This Canada is considered stable, so it's going to go up. Supply and demand, supply and demand. Make your move. Give me a shout. Buying, selling, investing. Thank you very much. That's it for today.